Hey guys, how you doing? I'm Tony with HVAC Explained. Working with another journeyman this morning. Um, he needs a hand changing out some pumps on an old boiler system. This is an old basement. You can tell because in Pittsburgh here, we have these old sandstone type basements. They did a little renovation and stuff and they added block to the space and whatnot. Now, yeah, sometimes you find some neat stuff, old stuff inside buildings and basements. So find old school stuff right here, boy. Yes, sir, this, I saw this, this is awesome. Bruno San Martino, he's a, um, uh, he's a native of uh, Pittsburgh. So, um, yeah, here's our old boiler system. Okay, now the control system, they have, I labeled these a while ago, so there was less confusion per technician that would come out for what floor these relay packs would run on. Always, for van stock, always carry a couple of these couplings because they are notorious to go bad, okay? Now, yeah, as you could see, why is there water everywhere? Why is there water? Where is the drain? It's way over there behind the Pepsi machine. Okay, so I changed this pump on 122220, okay? And the bearing assembly. Bearing assembly, pump motor, okay? We're gonna be changing this one and this one. Now, one way you can tell that your pump is going bad, the bearings that is. If you look carefully, you see that little spraying? That's water. When it starts to come out, that means your bearings are going bad, okay? Now, you can go ahead and change out the bearing assembly, but you gotta drain out or valve off if there's valves to change that. But if you do not change this and just let it run and run and run, you're eventually gonna kill this motor, okay? So we do have the new bearing assembly, a new coupler. Always change that little coupler that's in there. Always change that when you're changing a bearing assembly. Just start new, start fresh. You see the little oil ports? Okay, these little oil ports here. You wanna oil those up with the proper amount of oil that it comes supplied with, okay? So, let me back out of here slowly. Sorry, I pulled a muscle yesterday. I flinched when I was working on a steam humidifier and I, an old weightlifting injury, so. Okay guys, I've gotta grab a couple pipe wrenches. You can see how much torque I put on some of these things to shut it off uh, last year when I did this. I'm gonna valve it off, gonna drain down the boiler. There's a couple shutoffs here that I can actually turn. Some of them we just can't get to. Um, but yeah, this boiler system is old and inefficient. Very reliable, but you can hear them bearings. Okay. So there's some old air vents up there. Uh, we've written it up to replace this boiler and uh, and actually for, for that case, um, we've written it up for more adequate lighting. You see where that's going. Okay, guys, got to get going here. Let's get started. Okay, guys, we shut off power to the pumps right from here, but we still have residual power. I had labeled a while ago um, at the breaker panel which ones control these pumps. These are just relays to engage them. Uh, shut off your gas to your boiler so there is no combustion. Shut off your power to it. I'm going to go ahead and drain this down soon as uh, as soon as the one tech calls me and we shut this... Uh, this nice wiring job uh, off. There we go. Let me call him. Yep, 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 guys. Looking a lot better. Looking a lot better.
sledge, please. It's over on the other side. Thank you. Okay guys, here is our motor, the bearing assembly, and the housing or volute, whatever you want to call that. Um, there is arrows that are printed on here. Literally, it's an arrow. <laughs> an arrow. So sometimes they put them on the front. We have our other one right here. Here's the arrow right here. Okay, we are changing the whole thing, including the gasket faces. Believe it or not, they had um, on the old one, uh, they had uh, high temp silicone. I already had cleaned it off with a wire wheel, but they already had cleaned, um, used high temp silicone on one, and then they used a flat pan gasket on the other that's currently on the ground. Yeah, um, not all mechanical rooms are clean, I might add. Um, I would definitely recommend um, mentioning to the customer that it's a concern about mold and whatnot and shouldn't have all this debris in the way, shouldn't. So, but yes, always make sure you pay attention which way you put those pumps because they'll fit, they'll fit either way, but just make sure it's flowing in that right direction. So, but yeah, this system should get replaced. Uh, we've quoted it numerous times. So, okay guys, one last thing here with oiling, okay? This is the oil that's supplied from Bell & Gossett. Okay, you see there it says cup number one and then cup number two. If you read on there, it says bearing assembly. You literally cut open this, you cut this open, take off your cap, and you're gonna fill it all the way down to that line, cup number one. That says for the bearing assembly, which is right down inside of here. What's inside of here, <clears throat> there is a wick that's down inside of there, okay? You're gonna saturate that with that oil. You can pull this cap off to, to do so first time, and you fill it all the way down to that first line. Then the other half of this from right here for motor. So you drip, Half of it in there, half of it in there, and you're good, okay? That's all you gotta do, but that's supplied from Bell & Gossett. Good products. Yes, I was. A lot of times these springs do go bad on these, so They're it's the always good. What's that? Is that the old one? Yes, this is the old one. But it's good to have these in your work band because those springs will snap yeah. um, occasionally. So, but there's an Allen key that holds these on on both sides. You okay over there? Yeah. Yeah, just be careful that guard's not there. We're gonna be throwing this stuff out anyway, so keep this for stock on your van. Worst case scenario, 
So you got the motor assembly. Anytime you change out bearings or change the motor, put a brand new set on there, a brand new coupling here. If you can save one of these impellers, that would be good as well. Um, they do go, they do, uh, can go bad. As you can see, the fluid comes in through the front here and then flings out of these little journals as it turns, as it turns, okay? These bearings, um, they're, I don't, I've never rebuilt them. So I, I think they just come from the factory pre-pressed in there. Um, I've never had to replace, uh, rebuild them. I've always just changed out these bearing assemblies. So, but motor, bearing assembly, impeller, coupling. So that coupling, one reason why it's shaped like that, um, in case it's uh, not grease on me, oil on me, um, it's for starting purposes. It gives it a little kick, okay? Um, noise, noise won't really transfer through the motor as much. But one thing about these assemblies, when you see them up above a ceiling or hanging out in a boiler room, some people would actually put a bracket to hold it up in the air. You don't want to do that. This will support itself, okay? Ooh. Always stand out of the way, people. New pumps are in and running. Leaking from bleeder valve. <sighs> Bleeding out some air. Okay guys, our boiler is back online. Our pumps are currently running, heating the zones. One pump per zone, okay, to heat up different areas. You have one section of building or one floor, that is a zone. It's dedicated towards one pump, okay, on this particular system. There's different systems out there set up differently. Sometimes they use zone valves, but in this case, we're using pumps, okay? Um, right in front of me here, this is actually what's inside the building where this boiler feeds into. It goes around to each zone, each section. This is a part of the fin tube baseboard heating system, okay? It's nothing more than copper tubing that's going through this aluminum channel, okay, that you can actually see through, okay? And what's going on is, it's down inside at the base of the perimeter of each room, okay? Going around the facility. Then it heats up, transfers through that aluminum, it disperses coming out of there, creating a natural draft through the room. 
So that natural draft is creating a vortex, real slow, it's very comfortable, and it's rather quiet. Once in a while you'll hear some little pinging noises and stuff. You generally can uh, eliminate a lot of that just by venting out air, but expansion and contraction. Uh, I believe it, don't quote me on this, I have to look into it. I think it was for every 100 degrees of water temperature, the copper tubing will shift about one inch, believe it or not. It'll expand and contract. So it'll actually rub, and they do make little rubbing uh, plates that go inside of there. So, and here's an actual air vent that's on top of the tubing itself on the elbow. So, okay guys, well, you have a good day. We gotta go through and just make sure we're all bled out and uh, clean up around here as best as we can. So thank you very much for watching HVAC Explained. If you have any uh, questions, I can possibly answer them for you. Uh, please like, comment, and subscribe if this helped you out. And um, I don't know. Just uh, let me know if there's something you want to see, too. So thank you very much. Have a good day.